Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Air Force Research Laboratory successfully conducts first flight of RoboPilot. Amazon petitions the FAA for drone delivery waiver. And Ehang to test autonomous aerial vehicles in Guangzhou, China. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. The Air Force Research Laboratory and Design Technology successfully completed a two-hour initial flight of a revolutionary robotic pilot unmanned conversion program called RoboPilot at the Dugway Proving Ground in Utah. RoboPilot interacts with an aircraft the same way as a human pilot would. For example, the system grabs the yoke, pushes on the rudders and brakes, controls the throttle, flips the appropriate switches, and reads the dashboard gauges the same way a pilot does. At the same time, the system uses sensors like GPS and inertial measurement unit for situational awareness and information gathering. RoboPilot also boasts a simple installation process. Users remove the pilot seat and install a frame in its place, which contains all the equipment necessary to control the aircraft, including actuators, electronics, cameras, power systems, and a robotic arm. Now it's time for our Unmanned Minute, where we'll take a quick look at some stories making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. A wind-powered USV called the Sail Drone has become the first unmanned system to circumnavigate Antarctica. Known as SD-1020, the vehicle, equipped with a suite of climate-grade sensors, collected data in previously uncharted waters, which will offer insights into ocean and climate processes. SD-1020 launched on January 19th of this year from Southport in Bluff, New Zealand, and returned to the same port back on August 3rd. Drone Rescue Systems GmbH is supporting the European research project known as Formation Flight for In-Air Launcher First Stage Capturing Demonstration. Research is being conducted under the leadership of DLR on how launch vehicles can be returned to the launch site as efficiently as possible for reuse. The goal of the project is to achieve cost-efficient and environmentally friendly satellite transport. AUVSI named five startup companies as finalists in the Innovation Challenge at the AUVSI Unmanned Systems Defense Protection Security Conference taking place this week. The competition identifies startup companies operating in the commercial, defense, and non-traditional unmanned systems sectors. Each company will present their technology to government and industry representatives at the conference. NASA is continuing the final stage of testing for its unmanned aircraft systems traffic management platform in Corpus Christi, Texas. The test focuses on drone operations at altitudes between 200 and 400 feet within a dense city environment, which presents unique challenges to drone traffic management, such as fewer safe landing locations, additional obstacles to avoid, and a reduced capability to communicate by radio. Now back to the rest of the news. Amazon petitioned the FAA for a waiver from several current rules governing unmanned aerial vehicles to allow the company to begin delivery services with its Mark 27 drone. The waiver's request it would allow the aircraft to operate without a certificate of airworthiness and beyond visual line of sight. They also requested the aircraft be exempt from rules governing altitude, VFR fuel requirements, and maintenance documentation. According to the petition, the services would initially be conducted in low population areas where there's no possibility of icing conditions and where winds are less than 24 knots. Flight plans would avoid all known overflight areas such as sensitive government installations, hospitals, and open air assemblies. Delivery trips would be less than 7.5 nautical miles each way and would carry packages less than 5 pounds. The FAA posted information about the waiver and supporting documentation from Amazon on the Federal Register. The proposal is open for public comment through the 28th. Ehang selected Guangzhou, China as its first urban air mobility pilot city in the world to establish a low-altitude aviation transport network that shuttles passengers and goods in a safe, 
cost-efficient and environmentally friendly way. Through the pilot program, Yihang will help the Guangzhou government establish a command and control center to make sure that multiple AAVs flying at the same time in the city can remain in the air in a safe and efficient manner and can respond quickly to emergencies. Regarding passenger transportation, Yihang will use this pilot program to test more flight routes and vertiports based on practical application scenarios before it moves into commercial operations. Yihang says it plans to work with more partners to expand the operations to cover more areas in Guangzhou and transport a broader variety of high-value, low-weight goods including blood and organs for emergency medical use. Yihang says the pilot program in Guangzhou builds off its successful achievement of several milestones in the UAM space since the introduction of the passenger-grade AAV at the 2016 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And that wraps up our Air War and Man for today. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. Have a wonderful rest of your day and come back tomorrow for an episode of Airborne Unlimited.